Hello everyone, my name is Xiao Qing Zhuang, and I am a master student major in food science and technology. My major professors are Dr. Nuria Acevedo and Dr. Stephanie Clark. Before I start to introduce my research, I have three questions for you. Do you enjoy eating yogurt? Are you eating yogurt because the probiotics in yogurt is good for you? What if the probiotics in yogurt all died when you were eating it? During my graduate study, I focused on using the biogel technology to keep the probiotics in yogurt alive. Yogurt is one of the oldest fermented dairy products, which can be traced back to about 10,000 years ago. According to the FDA regulation, yogurt must contain lactobacillus bulgarix and streptococcus thermophilus. Some brands may add other probiotics when they are producing yogurt. Yogurt has a large diversity in the market, not only the different flavors, but also the different styles, such as sweet style, sundae style, drinkable yogurt, and yogurt whips. When I mentioned about Swiss and Sunday style yogurt on the previous slide, you may not be familiar with those two terms. But that's okay, because I will distinguish those two types of yogurt at here. Swiss style yogurt is also known as stirred yogurt. The yogurt is fermented and cooled together in a large batch. The fruit preparation will be blended homogeneously into yogurt before adding to the container. For the Sunday style yogurt, it is also known as fruit on the bottom because it can be poured out of the container with yogurt on the bottom and fruit on the top. Like its name, the fruit preparation in Sunday style yogurt is not mixed before packaging, but poured in the bottom of the container before adding the yogurt. Probiotics are live organisms which can survive after passing through our gastrointestinal tract. When they reach an adequate amount in our GI tract, they can provide potential health benefit to us, such as reduce the lactose intolerance symptoms, ease diarrhea, and may improve our immune system. But unfortunately, probiotics are really sensitive to the environment. Many factors can reduce their viability, such as high acidity, presence of oxygen, competition with other bacteria, as well as temperature. There was a research mentioned that only 76% of the yogurt on the market contains the viable culture. Yogurt is a really common probiotics delivering tool, and those four factors I mentioned in the previous slide all exist during the yogurt manufacturing. First, the fermentation environment is not the best for the probiotics growth, because most of the probiotics are mesophilic which means they would like to grow near 37 degrees Celsius. But the typical fermentation temperature is 45 degrees Celsius for the yogurt, which is too high for them. And the pH is too low for the probiotics as well, especially for the bifidobacterium lactase. A study mentioned that if the pH is below than 4.6, the growth of the bifidobacterium lactase will be limited. But at here, the pH is around 4.5. They will also compete with the yogurt starter at this step. In this step, the fruit preparation is blended into the fermented yogurt. This is where the oxygen introduced in. Because most of the probiotics are anaerobic, which means the presence of the oxygen will inhibit their growth. In order to enhance the probiotics viability during processing and storage, researchers have done many studies. The most representative one would be microencapsulation. Microencapsulation is the technology for packaging solids, liquids, or gaseous materials in a miniature. Sealed capsules can release their contents at controlled rates under specific conditions. For the probiotics, they are usually immobilized in a polymer matrix, such as polysaccharides and proteins, by using various methods, including emulsification, spray drying, and extrusion. However, besides the high cost, 
Many microencapsulation techniques require an aseptic, aseptic and anaerobic conditions to ensure the probiotics viability during the processing. Another drawback is that many microencapsulation techniques can be only used for the small-scale production instead of the food processing line. Bigel is a new technology that appeared in recent years. It is a solid-like soft material created by mixing hydrogel and oleogel or organogel at a high shear rate. Bigels are more commonly used in the cosmetics and the pharmaceutical area, such as topical drug delivery. But there was no published work about the bigel used in the food products. The oleogel, also called organogel part of the bigel, is a solid-like system and the continuous phase is nonpolar liquid solvents, such as oil. Previous study done in our lab found the probiotics can be protected within the oleogel emulsion for up to six weeks. But we didn't incorporate the oleogel emulsion into the yogurt. The hydrogel part of the bigel is a jelly-like system. The continuous phase is polar liquid solvents, such as water. So the objective of my study is to determine the ability of the bigel matrix to enhance the probiotic viability in yogurt. And we hypothesize that the bigel technology can preserve or enhance the viability of probiotics incorporated into yogurt during the shelf life. Here are the materials we used in this study. The oleogel emulsion part was composed of soy lecithin stearic acid, soybean oil, and milk. The composition of hydrogel was whey protein concentrate 80 and water. For the probiotic cultures, we chose lactobacillus acidophilus and bifidobacterium lactase because those two are the most common probiotics added into the yogurt. We grow them anaerobically at 37 degrees Celsius for 48 hours. After centrifugation, we wash the culture with milk to get the probiotics suspended into the milk. There were two critical steps when we're making the probiotic bigels. For the first step, at 85 degrees Celsius, the oleogel emulsion was liquid while the hydrogel was solid. I poured the oleogel emulsion onto the whey protein hydrogel then homogenize at 13,500 RPM for two minutes. For the second step, once the bigel cooled down to 55 degrees Celsius, the preheated probiotic milk was poured onto the bigel, and then I homogenized the bigel at 8,000 RPM for 40 seconds. Then the probiotic bigel is finished. After we created our probiotic bigels, we used them to prepare our samples. We made two controls for this study, which were probiotic bigels and yogurt with probiotics. In this sample, the probiotics were not protected within the bigel. To get the probiotic bigels into the yogurt, sweet style and sundae style yogurt were made. 18% of the probiotic bigels was added into the both style of the yogurt. For the sweet style yogurt, we let the bigel gel first and stir it into the yogurt. For the sundae style yogurt, we let the bigel gel at the bottom of the container and then cover with the yogurt. All samples were made in triplicate and stored at 4 degrees Celsius for 6 weeks. The probiotic viability was checked every week. Before plating, one of the sundae style yogurt was stirred into to mimic the consumer eating habits, and for the other one, the yogurt was washed out and only the probiotic bigels was tested. Pore plate method was used to get the probiotic counts in sample. The sample was first pipetted into the petri dish, then the sterilized agar was poured. The petri dish was swirled to mix the agar and sample well. For the lactobacillus acidophilus, it was grown in the MRS agar with 0.3% of the bile and 0.5% of the lactose, incubated 
aerobically for 72 hours at 37 degrees Celsius. Bio was to inhibit the Streptococcus thermophilus and Lactobacillus bulgaric's growth in yogurt. The lactose was to increase the colony size. Because Lactobacillus acidophilus is facultative anaerobe, well, the bifidobacterium lactase is the anaerobe. The presence of the oxygen can inhibit the bifidobacterium lactase growth. For the, bifidolacti for the bifidobacterium lactase, it was grown in the MRS agar with 0.3% of the bile with 0.05% of the l cysteine incubated anaerobically for 72 hours at 37 degrees Celsius. Bioadhere was to inhibit the Streptococcus thermophilus and Lactobacillus bulgaric growth in yogurt. The l cysteine was to increase the colony size. This is the mean total count of the Lactobacillus acidophilus in three samples contained yogurt. PSW means the probiotic yogurt without bigels, which is the control, and the SWB means the sweet style yogurt with probiotic bigels. SUB means the Sunday style yogurt with the probiotic bigels. For the control, the probiotic counts decreased significantly from week 3 and reaches a zero at week 5. Well, the lactobacillus as the offless count of both Swiss and Sunday style yogurt did not significantly change during the six week storage. At week three, the count of both Swiss and Sunday style yogurt are significantly higher than the control, which means the bigel extend the survival of the lactobacillus as the offless for extra four weeks. This is the main total count of the bifidobacterium lactase in three samples contained yogurt. We see the similar trends, which is the count of the bifidobacterium lactase decreased significantly from week three in control. Well, the count of both yogurt with probiotic bigels did not significantly change during the six week storage. And at week five, the count for Swiss and Sunday style yogurt are significantly higher than the control, which indicated that the bigel enhanced the viability of the bifidobacterium lactase in yogurt during the six weeks shelf life. Here are the differences of bacteria count in Swiss or Sunday style yogurt with control, which is the probiotic yogurt without the protection of bigel. The y-axis means the main lock differences between the two styles of yogurt and control. The left side plot is the Swiss style yogurt minus the control, and the right side picture is the Sunday style yogurt minus control. The black square is Lactobacillus acidophilus, and the right circle is Bifidobacterium lactase. The positive value means the probiotics had a better growth in treatments than that in control. We can see for the Lactobacillus acidophilus, both yogurt with probiotic bigel is around one log higher even from week one. And at week three, this difference reaches more than three logs until the end of the study in both style of the yogurt. For the bifidobacterium lactase, the differences starts becoming obvious from week two for both style of the yogurt. And continuously increasing approximately four logs until the end of the study of bacteria count between samples. The left side plot is the mean log differences between Sunday and Swiss style yogurt, and the right side is the differences between the probiotic bigel covered with the yogurt and not covered. The black square is Lactobacillus acidophilus, the red circle is Bifidobacterium lactase. For the Swiss and Sunday style yogurt, the mean log differences was approximately zero, which indicated that the agitation did not reduce the protection ability of the bigels. And the differences of the bigel cover with the yogurt or not is close to zero as well, which indicated that the yogurt did not impact the protection ability of the bigels. Now we can conclude that 
the bite gel can effectively maintain the survival of both lactobacillus acidophilus and bifidobacterium lactase in yogurt for up to six weeks. And the stirring did not reduce the protection effect of the bite gel. Also, the bite gel technology can be successfully applied in either Swiss or Sunday style yogurt. If you still remember the three questions I asked you at the beginning of the presentation, now we know with this technology, you can make sure the probiotics in yogurt is alive when you are eating it. I really hope we can have the probiotic bi-gel yogurt on the market one day, and hopefully you could recall what I have talked here at that time. I would like to express my appreciation to my two major professors, Dr. Nuria Acevedo and Dr. Stephanie Clark, for their valuable and constructive suggestions during this research work. My grateful thanks are also extended to my colleagues from Dr. Acevedo's lab and Dr. Clark's lab, especially Mark Ballum and Meng Chi Zhang, for their advice and assistance during this research work. I would like to thank our funding source, Midwest Dairy Association. This study cannot be done without their support. I would like to thank our ingredient donors, Milk Specialties Global and Danisico. Thank you. This is all I have today. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach me through my email. Thank you.